Hi guys, I'm HDR. Welcome back to my channel. We are building a Roscoe 9. This is the channel where you come to modify your Roscoe 9. And today we're going to be throwing some Industry 9 wheels on. And we're also going to be weighing the old rims to the new rims so you guys can see the difference in weight. And is it worth changing out your rims for some aftermarket ones? But before we do that, we're going to have to make some changes on the bike. Changes that I feel is needed. And we're also going to be replacing the chain because this chain broke. I am a chain breaker. So let's go ahead and get in making the changes before we even touch the rims. Well, I'm glad that's done. Now let's go ahead and get to the wheels. I'm pretty sure that's what you guys want to see. So these are the Industry 9 Enduro S. Now I already had to open it up and you get it from shipping. It's best to check it right there and then because if there's any dings, you tell them I'm not accepting this. This is what's the front wheel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Go ahead and get the rear one out. And these also have ceramic bearings. If you're gonna get wheels, might as well get ceramic bearings in them. And the engagement on here is 690 points. Oh. Yes, let's go ahead and give it a spin. Oh yeah. Oh, that was, that was really smooth, actually. Ooh, real smooth. And they're actually pretty light. Pretty dang light. I love the graphics on them. So, I can tell you right now, just by holding the front wheel and me going to the Bond Trigger front wheel, this is heavier. When I do this, I feel like the weight is the hub. When I go to the bond trigger one, when I go like this, I feel like it's more of the rim. That's where the weight's at. Yeah, yeah, the weight is not in the rim itself. It's more like it's in the hub. So on your line comp 30, which are your bond trigger wheels, what to me it's more important is the inner. Now the inner is 29 millimeters on your inner. Now on your Enduro S, it is 30, 30.5 millimeters, so just a little wider. So now this is the rear of your Line Comp 30, which is your bond trigger wheel. It has a rapid fire, which is 108 points of engagement. I'm not 100% sure, so this is what it sounds like. Which is pretty good. So when I'm riding my bike, you know, sometimes I do have a dead point to where when I go pedal and you hear gink, gink, it's because it has a dead point. Now on the Enduro, it has 680 points of engagement. Now, listen how the sound. So let's go ahead now and weigh them. We're gonna do the Bond Trigger front wheel first. Nine hundred and ninety grams. Let's go ahead and tear it just to make sure. Nine hundred and ninety grams. Now we're gonna do the Industry Nine front wheel. Nine hundred and eighty grams. Let's do that again. Let's tear it just to make sure. Eight 
880 grams. Now we're going to be doing the rear of the Bond Trigger. One thousand one hundred and ten grams. Let's go ahead and tear it just to make sure that's what it is. One thousand one hundred and ten grams. Now let's go ahead and do the industry nine rear wheel. One thousand ten. Let's go ahead and make sure that's what it is again. Ten grams. So going from the bond trigger to the industry nine saved me 210 grams of weight savings and that's rotation weight savings. So I know some of you guys might be saying why don't you go with carbon wheels. Well I'm a hardtail. I ding my back rim all the time because I like to run low tire pressure. Well and they're also stiffer. I'd rather have a little more compliance be a little softer. I'm a hardtail. My legs are on the suspension. So let's go ahead and get my rubber on here. All right. Now we got the front wheel on. So this is where I interrupt the video. Something happened with the sound quality with that last clip you just seen. Had it cut it short. Now what I was saying is that I'm an icon person. I love my icons back and front and have been running those tires for years. Except this time I'm going to be running a different tire, the DHR2. Now I'm not sure. I never rode that type of tire. I have rode the DHF in the front, but not the DHR2 in the back. So these are the Minion DHR2. I just got the regular Evo casing. If these tires don't work out, I'll go with the double down and might even install a cush core only in the rear. Also, there's a couple other things that I did that video got corrupted. I stuck the uh, SLX brake lever with the adjustment on the M M60 100 brakes with a couple of titanium bolts. On the regular uh, brake lever, you have no adjustment here. So I just took the SLX one, well bought the levers and installed it on here. Also what I've done, I have got rid of the uh, resin pads and stuck metal pads in there with the fins. Also drilled and tapped so I could throw a four millimeter retaining screw into there. But we're gonna see how these M61 brake holds up. If they don't hold up that much, then I'm gonna go ahead and swap them out with XT set. All right, that's all I had to show you guys. Let's get back to the video. All right, guys, the wheels are done. They look good. They look real good. Can't wait to get out there and ride. Let's check the back. Industry nine. I hope they ride as good as they look. Guys, this Roscoe's turning out to be a enduro. Would you guys call this an enduro hardtail? 160 on the fork. I'm not gonna tell you the degree of the head angle right now. All right guys, tell me how I'm doing down below in the comment section. Do you guys like the bike? Do you guys like uh, how it came from the factory? Do you like the upgrades that I made to it? And if it was your bike, what type of upgrades would you do to it instead of the ones that I'm doing to it? So if you guys like my video, give it a thumbs up. If you find yourself coming back to my channel more than once, just go ahead and subscribe, it's free. Well, that's the end of the video. You guys know what that means, it's over.